Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower Channel and today I wanted to talk about how to grow leeks. Leeks grow amazing on an aeroponic tower garden but there's a couple of things you need to know in order to not become frustrated at the process of growing leeks and to get the most out of growing leeks and to speed up the process of growing leeks so that they are an actual viable crop to grow on your aeroponic tower garden. So right here, I have some leeks. And you can see they are absolutely gorgeous. I've eaten a few of these, they taste amazing. They're really enjoyable to grow because you pretty much just put them in and they take care of themselves. I've had zero maintenance with these as they've been growing. And in our climate, which it's, we're in the mountains, so we have all these microclimates. I would say we're a, a zone 6B-ish. We get in the 90s and these continued to grow all summer. I actually had some of them hidden under plants behind tomato plants and under pepper plants to get a little shade, but they have grown all summer long and have done just fine. Ideal temperatures are 45 degrees to about 80. I went over that and didn't have a problem. Um, but it is something to be mindful of if you're in a really hot region You may want to grow these in the fall over the winter because they can handle a frost Or you can have them growing inside or you can start Seeding them in the late winter and try and get them ready before those really hot temperatures in the summer Here is the thing with leeks. Leeks grow extremely slowly it can take beets 120 to 150 days to fully mature so that's a really long time so in the past i've discussed with people that when you're growing leeks if you only have one tower you have to just be really mindful that you're giving up a grow spot for a really long period of time and you need to kind of weigh the cost is it worth it now beets are extremely nutritious they're full of flavonoids manganese, vitamin K, um, really, really good for our bodies. They are a superfood, so I think they're valuable to grow, but you do need to realize they can be in your tower for a really long time, and I just like to set people up for the proper expectations so you, that you don't get frustrated and feel like you don't have any food to harvest. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a trick in order to speed that process up and make growing leeks um, a viable crop, whether you have one tower or multiple towers. So first let's talk about seeding your beets. When you're growing beets, you're gonna wanna do two to three seeds per rock wool. And why I do two to three seeds per rock wool, because like I just mentioned, they grow really slowly. So if you only have one per rock wool, that's just a lot less crop you're gonna get for the same amount of space. So we're trying to increase that amount. Now, the downside of that is typically you get one beet or one leek, excuse me, that's really large, like this one up here, and one that's kind of small. We can use that to our favor as we're growing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And we're just gonna start our beet seeds like we do any other hydroponic plant for our towers. We put, we soak our rock wool for 20 minutes. We're gonna add two to three seeds cover it in vermiculite, put it on our grow station until they get a decent size, a couple of inches, then we put them into the tower. Now, when they're ready to harvest, this is how we're gonna harvest them and this is what makes growing beets um, doable, whether you have one tower or many, to ensure that you're not wasting a lot of time. We need to interval plant these and start our seeds every four months. This is crucial if you wanna grow leeks and consistently have leeks because they take so long. So every four months I have in my tower gardening journal, I'll put a link to that below. I have a tower gardening journal you can download and it just helps you to track all of this stuff. So every four months I have it written in my calendar when to start my leek seeds. We wanna start new seedlings every four months so they can get to the right size so we can harvest them, but also so we have other ones that we're eating while those are growing. And every four months is the formula I've found to keep that turnover pretty consistent. So we're gonna harvest these and I'm gonna show you how I harvest them. Now it's a little tricky because they are so big, but I'm just using a standard kitchen serrated knife. This one's like from the 70s, one of my favorite ones. And we're just gonna go up here to our leek. 
All right, and before we harvest this leek, I wanna show you another trick that you need to do to manage your leeks as they're growing. So if you look on here, this grow port, it's only so big. It's only, I don't know, maybe two and a half inches wide. And a beet, a leek, can get really wide. So we wanna kind of maneuver these out of this grow port as they're growing so that they don't get too jammed up, especially if we're doing more than one at a time. Here, this one's kind of grown off to the side, but I've allowed this one to get a little jammed up in here. So we're gonna take this whole thing out and I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the roots and all, show you how to fix this problem, and then show you the trick to making sure you have a lot of leeks to grow and that you're not constantly having to start new plants and wait another 150 days. Oh my gosh, these smell so incredible. But this root system is hefty. Okay, that was a workout. So 150 days gets you a lot of roots, right? So we have, move you guys out of the sun a little. So we have our leak here and it's definitely jammed up in this grow port and this grow cage so i'm going to pull that down some and just see if we can't get the bulb of this leak out of this grow cage a little bit and actually moving forward i have started the started growing these on the clips because you're less likely to have this problem it's usually the net pots that cause the jamming up if they're on a clip they tend to kind of naturally be able to move out of the grow port. Don't have this like jammed up problem, but this one is what it is. So I've got it pulled out here quite a bit. Here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take our knife and we're gonna go an inch, maybe an inch and a half from the bulb. I want a lot of the bulb. I wanna go pretty close to the roots because this is good food here. So maybe an inch, a little over an inch, and I'm gonna cut it off. This is what I'm gonna eat. This is our dinner. We're making some wild rice with celery and leeks from the tower, superfood dinner. Now this one over here is still pretty small. It's because they were competing for space. This one really took off and it left this one a little compromised. So I'm gonna pull these out a little bit further. Okay, much better. I'm just cutting little pieces off. Okay, I went ahead and cut the whole net pot off because it was so jammed up in there, except for some pieces on the bottom, which is totally fine. And I grabbed a clip. I highly recommend just growing them on this clip instead of in the net pots. I've switched all my root vegetables and anything bulbing like this over to the clips. It just eliminates this problem. So I'm gonna put them on the clip here. So I've just kind of stuck that into the roots and I'm going to trim these roots about 50%. I'll give these to the chickens. They smell incredible. All right, and now my leek is ready to go back into the tower where this is gonna regrow pretty quickly. It will not take another 150 days. This will start to show, show signs of regrowth in just as little as 24 hours. It's incredible. So by following this method, I get to regrow these and in, depending on your weather and um, lighting and all of that, in about six weeks, should be able to harvest this again. And I can keep that process going for about four months. And then I like to pull them out and start over. Um, I've never tried to see how long you could keep doing it. I just kind of lean towards at some point it's better to just start fresh seeds so that's kind of the method I follow but you don't often see me say cut it completely back and let it regrow with greens I find that it's not the most successful way to grow greens is to cut them back completely and let them regrow it actually slows things down and the food doesn't taste as good but with leeks that's not the case they seem to taste the same they grow back so much faster and are just way easier to manage this way if you want to grow leeks so let's stick this back in our tower 
and you don't really have to cut the roots if you don't want to they will definitely grow faster if you don't cut the roots but that would be really hard to get them back in there and they were super jammed up so I just felt it was a better option to go ahead and cut them so let's stick this back in our tower Alright, and once I get it in there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I pull those bulbs out a little bit. There we go. So now the bulb is completely out of the grow port and we will have much more success with it being able to have room. Pretty much what happened to this side one is it just didn't have room to grow because it was so jammed in that grow port. So when planting, let me show you what it looks like when you plant more than two seeds. All right, so down here I have one that is quite jammed up. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. We're going to manage it and we're going to go ahead and get these ready for the winter gardens because these towers, it's, we're on our last few days of this amazing fall weather and these are going to be going into the garage. A lot of this stuff will be taken out. So I'm going to go ahead and manage this one while we're working on our leeks, harvest some of it and get it set up on a clip so that we have a second round of successful leek, leek growing. That's incredible. Okay, this one has some brown leaves under it. This one was buried under tomatoes and peppers all summer long, and it's just incredible. So here we have three. There was a fourth one, and here's the problem when you go more than three. The fourth one never could. The fourth one never could grow bigger than this. There just wasn't room for it. So I'm gonna cut this grow cage off cut these roots back a little bit and go ahead and harvest let's see two of these and we'll leave one to get a little bit bigger and I'm gonna leave this small one and see if we can't get it to grow a little bit bigger so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna cut the roots on this one they're not as jammed up as that one that one I knew I wouldn't be able to get it back into the tower if I didn't cut some of the roots I'm gonna clean out some of the ones that don't look as good there's some dead roots in here that are kind of jammed up so I'm just thinning it and then I'm going to cut that net pot off and put this one on a clip just like the other ones and moving forward I will not be using the net pots anymore okay I have our clip and now looking at this I'm going to harvest all three because I don't know if you can tell these are, they're as long as me. Like, I'm five foot four, and this is as, well, minus my head. From my neck down, it's touching my feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these back and let them all regrow, and that'll give us a nice, hefty dinner for tonight. You just wanna stick it in the best you can to get it to grab a hold of some of the root base. Because there's still part of this net pot in here, I think I'm just going to attach it to that so that it has something to grab onto. Because ideally you'd be punching, you'd be putting the rock wool on the clip before it ever had roots. But we learn as we go, right? I had these clips and didn't use them forever and they have just become such a useful tool for things like leeks and turnips and radish and all of those. So let's find a spot for these. First I'm going to cut them back and then we'll find a spot to put them. So we're gonna cut it right about an inch and a half. Oops, I cut the baby. So much for seeing if that would grow. It's okay. All right, and this is what's going back into the tower. I like to plant these in a spot where there's a lot of big plants. And the reason is because they grow straight up and they're very vertical. They grow really well in between things like tomatoes and peppers and can still get enough light because these leaves will come out and kind of poke out the sides and get the sun they need. 
So they're really great crop to fill spots on your tower where you might not be able to grow something big because you've got other big plants. Uh, they're so tasty. They're so fun to cook with, super nutrient dense. I definitely recommend growing them. I just like people to know um, what, how to grow and what to expect when growing so that there's not some kind of false expectation because sometimes things can take a really long time especially if you're growing indoors and you can feel like this was a waste and I'm not harvesting any food and we want to avoid feeling that way and we do that one by understanding our plants and two by getting in a good interval planting system so every four months put it in your calendar start more leaks after that four month cycle when your next one's ready to go in and then the way you interval plant these is you'll have one that's maturing and you might be harvesting off this one let's say this one and eating off of it while you're waiting for your next one to mature and then your other one will be in the nursery just getting started and this one may burn out after a few months and you can go ahead and let this one take its place as soon as these are ready to harvest and then you'll be cutting and eating off of this one you can give this grow spot over to another type of plant and we repeat the process over and over and over again and then we have leeks indefinitely you always have a leek to grab if you want to make potato leek soup or i'm making wild rice with them which is so good okay so let's put this in the tower um, my towers are sort of in transition so i have to find a lot of this will be coming out and other things will be going in so i just have to think there's an open spot right here So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it here. And when I turn this tower over, these will stay and these will grow inside all winter. Some of these plants will stay and then a lot of them will be replaced with new crops. I don't know if I can get this one back in. Let's see. All right, so I was able to get it in there. Now, again, had I started these on the clips, some of what you just saw of me trying to shove the roots in there, that wouldn't be as much of an issue. But these roots are super hardy. They're like green onions or any onion. They have a very durable, very forgiving root system. So cutting those and kind of shoving them in is fine. The new healthy roots will grow out. And as this regrows, it'll just establish more space. These will begin to separate a little bit. It won't be so jammed up uh, and we will have more leaks without having to wait 150 days. All right, guys, that's it for growing leeks. Plant them every four months. Harvest them by fully cutting them off when you're ready to eat them and let them regrow. Enjoy them. They're super nutritious. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys on the next video.